And so it begins. Round one of the 2024 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Tournament. And we begin in Charlottesville. St. Joe's, the A-10 champion, descends on Clockner Stadium on a 12-game win streak. The sixth seed and host Virginia has lost four in a row. They stagger into the postseason. The winner of this game moves on to the quarterfinals in Towson next week. Following our game today, it'll be Duke Utah next on ESPNU, the first of eight games over the next two days. And Ishra Quinn Kesnick is in postseason form, boys Latin tie, and all welcome to May Madness. And we got a taste of May Madness last week. A lot of the top teams come into round one off of a loss. That could invite some volatility over the next couple of days. Seven of the eight at-large selections in this tournament are coming in off a loss. It, it's a year where the number two seed has five losses. In this game, St. Joe's, they're running a 12-game win streak, and the Cavs limp in, losers of four straight. So we're not sure which way this is going to shake out this weekend. We do know Virginia has championship pedigree, and it starts with maybe the best duo in the country, Connor Schellenberger and Peyton Cormier. Now, when you talk about Connor Schellenberger, you're talking about poise, patience, intelligence, a truly ambidextrous player who's been ultra, ultra productive. Great body control and IQ. He's a senior. They're going to lean on him today. Peyton Cormier, lefty goal scorer from Canada in the slot area. It'll be interesting. St. Joe's will mix up man and zone defense. Can they set up Cormier on step downs from that lefty wing? And can he find some space in the interior? Cormier second on the NCAA Division I list for career goals. Schellenberger has rewritten the Virginia record books. For St. Joe's, they have an attack that's played together for four years. Their top three attackmen are the top three goal scorers in program history. Champions of the A-10, Levi Anderson's a lefty tall, six foot four grad student from Calgary, loves the rollback. He uses his body to get leverage. Matt Bomer, he's a four-time captain, a grad student from Charlotte, North Carolina. He's a primary initiator with his right hand. And then Carter Page, he'll play in the inside. He's a garbage man, great shooter, magical hands, and he can paint corners like Sherwin-Williams. Page had six goals, including a viral between the leg shot in the A-10 championship against Richmond. And this Hawks team will go up against a Virginia defense that's given up 18 goals in three of its last four games. And their man-to-man -man scheme, their recoveries and double teams have not been on point. It'll be interesting. Lars Tiffany said, we're, we're going back to basics. We've got to get brilliant at the basics defensively. And if, if you follow Virginia over the years, usually in the postseason, he's got a little zone defense up his sleeve. Officials in today's game, Brian Abbott, Jeffrey Hoffman, and Patrick Kenny. What makes this game unique, Quint, stylistically? St. Joe's brings a ferocious 10-man ride. They ride with tenacity. They don't care. They want to play fast. They want to make this a chaotic tempest. Virginia thrives off of that. Look, in their league, St. Joe's is the bully. And Virginia knows that to take down a bully, you, got, you better throw the first punch. The first five minutes of this game, to me, are critical. St. Joe's, as is customary, double poles on the wings of the faceoff. Gavin Ty to take the faceoff for St. Joe's. He spent his first two years with the Cavaliers in Charlottesville. And it's Anthony Gobriel, the Navy transfer for Virginia. Ben Weyer comes away with the initial ground ball off the faceoffs. Ground balls have been a problem for Virginia the last two games. The net is empty. St. Joe's in its 10-man ride. They clog up the middle of the field. Long outlet pass is intercepted. Keener picked it off. Anderson gets checked. Flag is down. St. Joe's with the early man up and a free possession. Terrific start for the Hawks. The 10-man it's been so effective there. They are the number two in the country in terms of opponent clearing percentage. And there, there you see why. Teams clear at 76% against St. Joe's. Normally, Virginia, from a size and physicality standpoint, has an advantage over every opponent. St. Joe's, one of the few teams in the country that can match Virginia with its size, and they get the first score. Colin Reich 
from Charleston, South Carolina. Part of this top six on attack that includes three Canadians, a North Carolinian, a South Carolinian, and one Marylander. Hawk fans are here, and this starts with the ride. Noon's handling all off the turnover, and you see the empty net at the far end of the field. It's a deep zone 10-man ride. He tries to throw the ball to Millen, the attackman, and it's picked off. Now at the other end, it's Reich, who's known for his wheels, gets leverage from middle of, of the field with a lefty dagger. And you couldn't draw up a better start for Taylor Ray and his St. Joe's team. Taylor Ray, in his 13th season, former Duke captain, played at Duke with Virginia assistant Kevin Cassis. Those two coach together as well at Lehigh. Kastner against this clear. The net is empty. Virginia throws it downfield. Great look by Whalen. He missed it high. Virginia's going to have to do that to keep St. Joe's honest. Whalen rushed that shot. The, the key to breaking this 10-man, according to Lars Tiffany, Virginia coach, is to shoot or look deep early. If that's not there, then ball reversal is key once you get the mid, uh, ball up by the midfield line and then look deep to the corners. Ryan Colsey now, it's Griffin Schutz. Schutz draws a flag, fires on the run, beats Tommy Gross. We're tied at one, a little juice on the Virginia sideline. Yeah, these two teams, defensively, there is significant size. We know Virginia, Jurassic Park, Kastner, Fulton, Schroeder. You look at St. Joe's, Liam Quinn, 6'7". Levi Virch, who's an animal, 6'2". Alex Keener, their pole, 6'3". Natural grass surface, rain yesterday, the women's team played. The field's in great shape, but you're gonna see some slippage. And Schutz, who's a bulldozer. This is a guy who goes to the goal hard. He plays an emotional style. He turns and, and starts barking at his opponent. He demands a pole and he demands double teams. Griffin Schutz. All ACC midfielder, his 22nd of the season. Virginia, the counterpunch, 44 seconds after St. Joe scored. And that is Schutz on the face-off wings. Now Virginia might be hunting some early offense. Connor Schellenberger gets the touch. Extra man opportunity here for the Cavaliers. So they take advantage. Of the extra man on the faceoff, on the doorstep, slam dunk, Peyton Cormier. They need to give him a doormat on the crease. Career goal number 215, six shy of Mac O'Keefe's all-time record. Backside feed, Jack Boyden picks up the assist. It's a Virginia power play, clicking it north of 50% on the season. This is just simple. There's not even ball rotation. Millen carries up, throws back to Boyd. Cormier crashes the far post. You need that backside defender to get down to the post. And if your goaltender, Tommy Gross, you too can help pick off that pass. Tommy Gross took over as St. Joe's starter. Early in the season, he's 11-0 as a starter in Virginia. Wins the faceoff. Now the ride. Ware trying to hold on to his stick. Turbine's out of trouble. Unsettled for Virginia. Here comes Chismar. Nobody picks him up. Whistles it just offline. There is Gross, 11-0 as a starter this season. Wide-based right-hander, 52%. Made his first start last year at 2023. Silver Spring, Maryland, played club ball for Nations United. Six-foot sophomore, really good out of the goal. And Quintus' defense does a good job of limiting shots from the other team. St. Joe's will mix man and zone. They start this off in man-to-man -man D. Cormier spins it to Minky. Second midfield in there. Now Joey Terenzi. Terenzi with a bouncer, 3-1 Virginia. And the Who's bench, juiced. There is a level of electricity here today, walking up. It feels like a fall Saturday, the smell of the barbecue at 8.30 in the morning, the grassy knoll filling up. Lars Tiffany telling us yesterday that he felt that Joey Terenzi was getting closer 
to being 100% in terms of his health. They're asking him to go from a short stick defensive midfield position early in the year to now playing on the second midfield. But this is the play on the clear that gets it done. You talk about a strong season. Ben Ware has been awesome off the ground and causing turnovers. Three goals in two minutes and 20 seconds for Virginia. St. Joe's again, double pulls the face-off wings. Gobrio and Ty. And we're going to have a whistle. Loose ball hold on Virginia. It goes to St. Joe's. Cavaliers have won four out of five at the X. Virginia's close defense is outstanding. Where they've struggled lately is their midfield. Specifically, their short stick midfield position, leaning on of just a few players. Levi Anderson now. Over to Carter Page. You see the ball movement, highly skilled unit. Bomer, the four-time captain, has it knocked out of the stick. And picked up by Schroeder. Now the ride by St. Joe's. It's about a nine and a half man ride. The goalie hedging out, not all the way out of the net. Chase Yeager. It was interesting. Looking call for help. Got to get it across midfield before the shot clock hits 60. This is going to be close. Waylon just got it across. No, he did not. And that's what they do. That's a second failed Virginia clear. And in talking to Lars Tiffany, Virginia coach, he said it was difficult because when you look at the game tapes, they don't show you the full view. But he, he said that the Richmond game was shot wider and they could see the spacing of the defense and the goalie. Again, it's a deep zone. Goalie comes out, it, it, it's almost like a cover zero, and they rotate up the field. And where they do a great job is trapping you by the sidelines as you approach the midfield line. Yeah, Levi Birch, number 60, is a future pro. He takes away the middle, and what they want you to do, talking to some coaches in the A-10 this week, they funnel you to the sidelines, using that sideline as an extra defender, and their timing on their double team is what's made this ride so good. Anderson, the all-time point scorer at St. Joe's. Feeds the middle, shot and a score. That's Carter Page, his 41st of the season. Page, second all-time at St. Joe's in gold. Anderson is third. Matt Bomer is first. Well, you go over the scout and you watch tape. And he's described as a slick and skillful Canadian. Hawk fans celebrate because you're, you're actually covering Carter Page here. But you just give him a fraction and an inch inside. He is so skilled with that right hand. He's going to catch in traffic. He's got a zillion different release points. That's a low feed, so he doesn't fight it. He takes it down low and finishes low. He is a magician in the slot. Face-off violation on Virginia. St. Joe's has it back. Anderson loves to get to that left hand. So the key there is Anderson goes. That defender's got to be top side of Page. He's got to be in front of him. You can't be trailing him. Jesse Jason, 28 in crimson. Draws He's the, the only underclassman amongst the top six. Now Torn Eccleston, big Canadian, uses his body. Lefty post-up guy. Comes back to Bomer. Virginia pulls Jesse Jason because of his speed and acceleration. From the far side, that one hits the turf. Matt Nunes got a piece of it. Burt tumbled. Kastner over to Fulton, and now Virginia will have to clear. The net is empty. Nunes fires it downfield, and it's a turnover. The Lars Tiffany at practice yesterday said, if St. Joe's is going to pressure you, it's kind of like football. Hey, you're going to keep bringing that safety up into the box. At some point, you've got to make them pay and go over the top wow. and hit him with a couple of long boxes. His quarterback is trying to throw the deep out, and it's not there. Coach Tiffany out onto the field, begging Matt Nunes, the goaltender, not to throw that pass. That's three failed clears by Virginia and two, and two that are identical, where Nunes is forcing that ball into a bad area. One for four, clearing the ball for Virginia. Getting top side and finishing. 
That's Eccleston. The 6'4 Canadian out of Calgary who won a championship with D2 Lenore Ryan in Hickory, North Carolina last year. Another turnover comes back to bite Virginia. You know, you rep this all week, and then you gotta get a sense of what it's gonna look like. Noons throws that ball. The St. Joe player comes out of the box at the other end. Eccleston just using his size at 6'4", 208. The lefty grad transfer from Lenore Ryan, D2 title. He's from Calgary. He had a huge opening week game against BU where he scored five goals. He's a body dodger. He loves contact. He averaged 50 goals in his last three seasons with Lenore Ryan. Now Virginia serving St. Joe's a bit of a taste of its own medicine. And that's going to be on the Cavaliers. It goes back to St. Joe's. Now, Lars Tiffany said, watching St. Joe's, the way they ride, the way they attack, he said, we feel empathy now because we used to do that to our opponents. Okay, big picture. St. Joe's has taken Virginia's first punch here, and they've given him another punch back. So, bully on bully, this, this, this fight's going 15 rounds. Yeah. Anderson finds a cutting. Eccleston turned away by Nunes. Whalen tries to check it down. He does. And again, there is the ride. It's like escape from Alcatraz trying to clear against St. Joe's. The look is deep to the far right corner. Cormier's got some real estate. And no escape this time. Flag down. So they get Eccleston. High and late on the ride, and he's high and late. Left side of your screen after this ball is released. Right here it comes. Boom, right there. High and late as the cross field pass is being made. That's going to be the right look for Virginia. Coach Tiffany said we got to advance the ball up the field and then change fields. Throw the cross field pass and then advance it up. You cannot bring it up the same side. We've got to change fields. St. Joe's, their man down defense, allowing a goal less than 20% of the time. But Virginia's two for two today. Shuts with his second, and it's 4 3 Cavaliers. A lot of goal scoring in this first seven and a half minutes. The fans at Clockner are enjoying the sun and the scoring. Schutz steps in from distance, and this NCAA tournament is off to a fast start. Thousand three when the tourney expanded. Virginia's won five. When you look at current members of the Big Ten, Ivy, Big East, and Patriot League, current members have accounted for seven. It's pretty impressive, this run by Virginia. Won it in 2019, won it in 2021. Championship weekend last year. And they wear the pumpkin orange helmets for special games in May. You win, you keep them back, you bring them back. It's the first time all year they've worn the orange lids. There's eight programs in this NCAA tournament right now, Anish. Eight programs who have won NCAA titles, tying for the most of the 16 teams that will compete this weekend. Will Colucci taking the face off, tries to dump it ahead. And we're going to get a loose ball hold. It's going to be on St. Joe's, so Virginia ball. But St. Joe's forgot how to lose. They're on a 12-game win streak. They open the season with three straight defeats. Yep. Lost to Boston, Duke, and Towson. There's a certain confidence that comes with that. Virginia's lost four in a row. Here's McCabe Millen, one of the top freshmen of the country. Schellenberger to Schutz. Two goals already. This looks like a little bit of a zone defense. They're showing adjacent. Yeah, it is a zone. They pass off. So this is the first look from St. Joe's, the Hawks zone deep. Cormier camped in the middle. They are swarmed around 24. Schellenberger from X. 
Snakes and stings. Three time to Warton finalist, Connor Schellenberger. Really aggressive mindset from the leader who went to nearby St. Anne's Belfield. He's played aggressively by the shorty who then loses his edge and he just gains a step and he's gone. Poof, see ya. Whether this is a zone or a man, St. Joe's is slow to go and Schellenberger takes that extra step to greatness and then stares it down. Connor Schellenberger in the NCAA tournament averaging more than six points a game for his career. And that includes that game against Maryland where he got shut out. We're going to get a whistle. That's going to be St. Joe's ball. It's on Virginia. Hawks back on attack. Now, this is a St. Joe's team, much like Virginia. Every now and then you'll see their poles out there on offense, especially a guy like Levi Virch, who we will talk about quite a bit today. Number 60. Second midfield getting a run now for St. Joe's. Campbell, Waters, and Mallory. Mallory spins down the alley, throws it away, unforced error. Perhaps disrupted a bit by Chase Yeager. Not the worst thing in the world for St. Joe's, as now you're in their 10-man. Kastner thought about it. Intercepted. Another turnover. St. Joe's gets it back. You can go over and back in the first 20 seconds of the shot clock. Anderson now. He's got the short stick matchup to Renzi, looking for that left hand. Virch is a weapon with the pole. And he'll Saint, stay out there now. Looks like he'll run off. So St. Joe's graduated a dominant Fogo, Zach Cole. And the thought process was, how can we get more possessions? Well, they've gotten into the riding business, and it's been pretty lucrative. Right now, Virginia's one of five on clears. One of five on They're clearing at 20% in each. Yeah, a team that came in clearing at 92% third in the nation. Save news. Low shot and a score. It's the red shirt freshman, the A-10 rookie of the year, Jesse Jason. St. Joe's is taking the punches. Yeah, this looks like the, it's going to be a four-quarter game cue. If Virginia can't clear, St. Joe's may be getting off back on that bus with a playoff win at, at this pace. This young man from Liberty High School in Sykesville, Maryland, he's only a sophomore. He got a little playing time at the end of last year. Starts with a failed clear. Another box clear. Virginia's just not seeing the passing lanes. And here's this uncommon speed. Stutter step, step away, defender lunges, and then he turns the corner left-handed. Over the head check's not there. You gotta body up Jesse Jason. He's gonna beat you with speed. Noons can't track it from close range. This young man is a future star. 28, Jesse Jason. He is the lone underclassman on St. Joe's top six. This one is kicked back to Gobriel. Looks like somebody took a shot in the face too. And in a sport really known for last have players having two last names. He's got two first Jesse names. Jesse James has two. Uh, J well, wasn't that a Seinfeld bit? You can't trust a guy with two first names. <laughs> Second midfield now for Virginia. To Renzi over to Schellenberger. Schellenberger probing. All-time assist leader at Virginia. Here's McIntosh. Two goals on the season. Gets the pick from Boyden. McIntosh swivels down the alley, plays it back to Cormier. Gross with a big save. Schellenberger off the rebound. Feet in front, knocked down by Virch. His head coach, Taylor Ray, said Levi Virch on ground balls reminds him of Brody Merrill, who is as good of a pole as this game has ever seen. Uh, a Paul Carcaterra released this morning uh, a PLL draft for next year. Birch is a junior from British Columbia. Left-handed, he's a free safety on the ride. He can handle. Former uh, Team Canada player for their U21s that played in Ireland. Yeah, he's a first-round pick next year. 
Shot clock at 25. Cormier against the short stick. Using that big body. There's the double. Cormier retreats over to Terenzi. Boyden skips to Cormier from the outside. That's Payton's place on the right wing. Death taxes and Peyton Cormier. Lefty snapshot with his feet set. Playing catch up top, they run the weave. Defense just sags in just enough to give him enough leeway to plant and let it rip. And the big man doesn't miss. He, the closer he gets, the more his shooting percentage will skyrocket. He's been doing it for four years. Picked up uh, later in the week by the PLL Atlas. So that's good news in what was a, a probably a rough draft night for Peyton. There's Virginia causing havoc off the faceoff. And knocked out of bounds by the Cavaliers. So St. Joe's gets it back. And he's won pace for a zillion goals. Yeah, this, th this is... <laughs> Whatever that top end number of goals was, I think we're going over. Virginia stays in their conventional ride. I don't know if they want a 10 man. Got to get it across the equator before the shot clock hits 60. Ball batted down. St. Joe's gets it back. It's a good handle in traffic right there. At 46, Danny Gallus. Sophomore from good counsel in Maryland. Can play close, he can play LSM. Carter Page has a goal. Both teams shooting it exceptionally well in this opening quarter. 6-4 Virginia. Fast paced game, end to end action. Big save Noons. And the Hawks in the crease. Jesse Jason, 28 in Crimson. He's a nice compliment to, to this highly skilled offense. Now Virginia took a shot there. Took a shot, and the goaltender, Tommy Gross, was closer. In my book, that counts as another turnover. It, it will be statted as a missed shot, but in effect, it really is a turnover. Again, it's the ride causing havoc. Now Virginia in the 10-man, Nunes. Milling in retreat, gets back into the goal. First of eight first round games this weekend. Coach Tiffany and his staff still trying to figure out how they can effectively clear the ball. You practice it all week, but on game day, it, ju it just looks different. It hits different. Eccleston against Jaeger. Feet in front, they had the cutter. There's Jurassic Park. Now Anderson has it back, plenty of time. Bomer, the four-time captain. Mallory working on Burt, draws the double. Weyer got his stick on it. Weyer's having a monster game, 44 and white. And they Here got comes George Fulton. Over to Wills Burt, back to Fulton. He'll fire, and he missed it wide. Boyden's got the backup. Jack Boyden will trigger D3 Player of the Year at Tufts last season. Minute 13 to go, opening quarter. 10 goals between the two teams. Expect Virginia to be patient here now. Both teams shooting it well. St. Joe's four for nine. Virginia six of 11. McCabe Millen running through the midfield is a new wrinkle. And he's got the short stick gone. Millen gets the step, plays it back to Cormier. Schellenberger thought about it. And Cormier play catch. I like this wrinkle. They showed a, just a tad of this last weekend in the ACC tournament. But it gets Millen, who's normally an attackman, on a short stick. So it's a way that Kevin Cassis, their offensive coordinator, can create some positive matchups. Millen isolating, gone. Redshirt sophomore from Illinois. Millen accelerates to the cage. Skip pass, shuts. He's got two already. Save, gross. Off the rebound, the Hawks take it. Final 20 seconds. Virginia now with its ride. Gone, gets rid of it. Whoa. Bodies colliding, middle of the field. To Ragnarok on the lacrosse field, flag down. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. 
Multiple penalties now after the whistle, dead ball, and the Hawks, the Hawks are feeling it on their bench and their fans. Let me tell you, this first round is off to a, an electric start. Hagler Hearns opening round, it's been that kind of fight. to Gotti Ward fight. Hagler Hearns, one of the great first rounds of all time. Now Google it. I actually watched it recently on YouTube. Virch takes it into three different Cavaliers, and Millen does get him high with an elbow. Now, Virch was falling to the turf, but clearly McCabe Millen kind of came through with the elbow, so I do agree with that call. And then afterwards, there's some words. These officials are going to have to get on it, okay? If you watch St. Joe's play in that A-10 tournament last week against Richmond, there was a lot of chirping. There, there were borderline unsportable been like celebrations after goals as well. And Lars Tiffany told his team, you can't take the bait, you can't get flagged. St. Joe's with a six on four here in the final seconds of quarter number one. The Hawks keep possession, so they will begin the second quarter with a six on four advantage and the ball. No face-off when the second quarter begins. Haymakers flying in the first 15 minutes. As advertised, St. Joe's comes up from West Philly, and they ride. The 10-man has had some serious bite, but Virginia's offense has been hit humming as well. Teams, many times they've looked deep, and the ball has been intercepted. Two-man advantage, Nunes with a huge save on the doorstep, makes another one, third try, St. Joe's gets it. Carter Page, his second of the game, and it's 6-5. Relentless, relentless interior pressure from St. Joe's. Do you see the... Cavalier defense talking over. It's a four-man rotation. They're in a box or a diamond, but it was one save, two saves, three times a charm. We mentioned the Canadian flavor for St. Joe's. Box lacrosse. Nunes does a great job there, Nice moving his body. He resets and locates. Second save, another masterful one. What are you going to do the third time? I mean, give me a break, defense. Find the ball. It's that box background, right? Tight spaces. Page so good on the rebound. He had six goals on eight shots in the A-10 championship. Well, it, it's ingrained in young box players. Because the goalies are so padded up and the net is so small, you anticipate a rebound off a shoulder pad or off a shin guard of, of a goaltender. And so they carry that to the outdoor game where on any shot, they, they turn and get good inside position and anticipate rebounds. Ten-man ride, shot on goal. And that will stay with Virginia. St. Joe's still has an extra man advantage here for another 20 plus seconds. That's a great outcome if you're Virginia. And, and, and Coach Tiffany said, we need to take deep shots early on our clears. Now he really emphasized at practice yesterday, if they're going to ride you and you're able to clear and you get into a settled set, that's a win for St. Joe's. You have to make them pay for being aggressive, and so far the aggressiveness has paid off for St. Joe's. Now normally they would have been aggressive off the end line there, but man being, down. being a man down, they're just ragging the clock. Now we're even. Millen wheels it to Schellenberger. Feet in front, Boyden taps it in. For as good as St. Joe's has been in the ride game and on offense, their defense has been porous. This is just too easy. It's a slam dunk for the Cavaliers. They run Millen out of the box as a midfielder. He triggers it to Schellenberger. Eyes are up. It's a simple little cut inside. Cormier goes one way. Boyden loops around it. The catch and finish. Layup. Money in the bank. Ty, the former Cavalier and Gobriel, back in the circle. Second NCAA tournament appearance in program history for St. Joe's. 
couple of years ago, Quint. They played a breakneck game with Yale in round one, nearly upset the Elis in New Haven. This team has a lot more experience, older, deeper. Now, they've won 25 consecutive games in conference play in the regular season last year. They were upended in their conference tournament. They get to the NCAA tournament this year, beating Richmond twice. They had a win against Penn as well. Beat UMass. A-10 was a tough league this year. St. Joe's got, got off to that slow start. I think they came into the year with a lot of notoriety. Cole C to Millen. Shelly the backup. And they lost to BU, a game that Kark watched and told us they were still dangerous. The following week, they lost to Duke. No big deal. But then they lost to Towson. They've rattled off 12 straight wins. Duke and Towson both in the NCAA tournament. They played Duke tough for about a half. Schellenberger playing hangman. Feet in front. That's too easy for Cormier. Schellenberger to Cormier. Rinse and repeat. I think the defensive adjustment for St. Joe's has got to be to get in the hands of Connor Schellenberger. Because if he's uncovered behind the net, this hangman said, uh, this just does not have a happy ending for the Hawks. Cormier positions himself inside. He gains some leverage. Again, there's a defender standing right next to him doing nothing. Way too easy. Tommy Gross, their goaltender, hung out to dry. Q as good as St. Joe's has been in the riding game. It's been almost disastrous in settled Correct. sets. Correct. They're, they're, they're settled sets, especially down low. It's not like Virginia's bombing from the outside. Schellenberger wants it over to Cormier. Powers it home. Four in the opening half for Peyton Cormier. Schellenberger's assisted on three straight. Virginia with its largest lead of the game. So Peyton Cormier has set all kinds of scoring records. He's one of the, the most dynamic goal scorers. <laughs> he had a penny, a jersey, a penny, a shirt, and a whistle waiting for him. It's time to go to work. Yeah, his wife, Lauren, they, they were towing his pickup truck from the U-Haul that broke down. Taylor Ray, an assistant, has taken over this St. Joe's program, led him to uh, an NEC title in 2022 and now an A-10 title. Schellenberger's got the short stick matchup. He's got four points. Good defense. Schellenberger able to recover, losing his man. Goal line extended. Plays it up top. Here's Thomas Menke. Virginia, the settled sets, has gotten elite looks. Millen, saved by Gross. He got a piece. Shot clock resets to 60. 11.45 to go, quarter number two. So Taylor Ray was an indoor player. Calgary, uh, Edmonton came down to champ camp at Johns Hopkins University when he was in high school, and he was put on Team America, which was kind of a, a ragtag outfit of guys from South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Canada. Well, Joel Alberici, who's, an Ar Ar uh, who's the Duke head coach at Army right now, who's a Duke assistant, he spotted Taylor Ray. And so Taylor shows up on campus as an attackman. Banky face dodge. Cormier save Gross. Good outlet. Quick outlet to Keener. First team all-conference poll. St. Joe's top four polls all made all-conference. Three first-teamers and the 6'7", Liam Quinn, a second-teamer. Now let's see what St. Joe's does now here in the sub-game. They keep these defensive players on the field, and it'll make Virginia a little bit uncomfortable defensively now with some matchups. We got Will Corey out there playing D. Jesse Jason has speed. He'll go right to work against Terenzi. Gets past Menke. Skip pass intercepted by Nunes. Good read. Now, Quint, we were talking before the game. Matthew Nunes for Virginia might be the key to the game with his outlet passing. He's only 40% in cage the last four games in this losing streak. Doesn't have to be great, but if he can get rid of the ball and beat the clear with his passing, he's a weapon. Well, he's had two turnovers so far. Terenzi against so Virch in, in and theory, now Schellenberger. In theory, I agree with you. But uh, that, that last turnover by St. Joe's was, was, was really not the play you wanted to see because they had some positive matchups coming their way if they could grind that possession. You know, this game, 
tomorrow we're, we got Lehigh at Johns Hopkins. It's a game that's going to feature 60 second possessions. <laughs> yeah. Th this game's featuring like 12 second possessions. What's the adjustment St. Joe's has to make in settled sets defensively? A, you got to you do a better job against Connor Schellenberger. Now B, you got to handle picks. Like this is another scenario. Face guard on the inside. Millen, the pass, the Good shot, stop. and the rebound gobbled that was by Gross. A dangerous move by Ryan Colsey. Does a good job. He even changes levels from the inside. That's Tommy Gross's best stop. He's really smooth between the pipes. I love the way he moves. He's only a sophomore. He's got a super, really bright future just because he, he is really mobile, flexible, makes it look easy. Second to team all, 8-10 goalie, six saves for Gross. Hawks trying to stem a 4-1 Virginia run. It's been all Schellenberger and Cormier. Levi Anderson's been quiet. Here comes Mallory. Anderson does not have a shot. He's the leading point scorer. Way off the ground, cross turnover by Virginia. 44 in white is playing a gigantic game today. Jaeger. Far. Millen against Clemens, turns the corner. I've got a piece of the goalie, Gross. Weyer's got the backup. Weyer's a threat to score. It's not a given that he runs off. I think. But it looks like he will. Outside, outside of the, the, the clearing issues that Virginia has had, the known quantities have come to the table today. Cormier, Schellenberger, and meanwhile, St. Joe's offense, the attack's been silent. Jaeger, skip pass on a great look and just whizzed it too high. Left-handed, he's a natural righty. Chase Jaeger picked up as a free agency in the PLL. California Red, Redwood signing him on Wednesday. Jaeger, a short stick D midi, runs off. Now Schellenberger, a goal and three assists in this opening half. It was just one for his last 10 shooting coming into this game, both those games against the one seed Notre Dame. Boyd and shovels it back to Cormier, bouncer offline. 15 to shoot. Schellenberger against the 6'7 Quinn. It's like facing Kastner in practice. Shot clock at three. At two, Colsey gets topside. Four unanswered for Virginia. They extend to a five-goal lead. That one stings if you're a St. Joe's fan. Brian Colsey having a, a, a superb sophomore season, the lefty from Ridfield, Connecticut. Dad Roy, a legend for the Syracuse Orange. And he knows it, he's got the clock in his head. He realizes that time is not on his side. And so he pushes to get to his strong hand. The adjacent slide is a tad bit late. Colsey, who can rip it with his feet set, got a big frame as well, and he, he paid the price. Big difference in this second quarter. Virginia, 12 shots. St. Joe's three. Hold on Virginia. Hawks ball. Need more attack presence now if you're St. Joe's. Got to get some touches. Matt Bomer's been quiet. Levi Anderson's had little impact. Carter Page, he, he, he's, he's the beneficiary when Bomer and Page start isolating from the wings. But it seems like St. Joe's is really intent on attacking the Virginia midfield defenders. A lot of teams are, Quint. All right, you got Kastner, Schroeder, and Fulton down low. Short stick matchup here. Got the help from Kastner. The defense here, the crowd applauds. Jason to Anderson. Marked by Schroeder. Better fundamentals and shape by this Virginia defense. Anderson, a third round pick in the PLL draft. Taken by the Redwoods. 
Slip and slide from X. Low shot and a score. That's Jesse Jason, his second. And St. Joe's gets one back with 6.22 to go in the quarter. Hawks will never die. That's their best half court possession we've seen in the first half. Okay, they work the shot clock, they're patient, they attack at multiple angles. Eccleston loses his edge, no big deal. But Virginia's defense is rotating. You see the go right there and behind it, Chismar is just a second late. Again, good things will happen when you can get this Virginia defense to double team, to slide, and to rotate. They've been vulnerable in their recovery patterns. Great possession. The assist to Eccleston, his second point. Punched ahead into the box, Schellenberger able to recover, and now Virginia in the settled set. Ware launches Cormier, the backup. Virginia has been surgical in the six on six, picking apart this defense. Yeah, they, they've done their best work when the ball's behind the net. Issue for Virginia has been in the clearing game. The ride for St. Joe's has everything to do with that. McIntosh, part of the second midfield. Cormier, four goals in the opening half. Now Terenzi, two-way player. Corey, Cormier, spins around. Pretzel's out of trouble, shoots, scores. Five in the first half for Peyton Cormier, and he is now two goals away from tying Mac O'Keefe's Division I record. Good luck stopping this. Good luck stopping this. Watch him use the spin move. The ball movement, you got the approach. He spins right around it. Then he's got the strength to power through the tail end of that hook check right there. Look at the defensive stick. He actually has two hands on his stick, Peyton does. Releases the top hand, re-engages, and then shoots. You talk about strength, power, and skill in one package, it's right there. Virginia never had a 60 goal score prior to last season. Xander Dixon did it a year ago. That was Cormier's 60th. And Cormier now just one goal away from tying Dixon's single season school record. 11-6 Virginia, it's been a high octane opening half. Cavaliers have settled down a bit here in this second quarter. It was 6-4 after one. Virginia staggered into the postseason on a four-game losing streak. St. Joe's, winners of 12 straight, longest win streak in the nation. Bomer over to Anderson. He wants to go left. Schroeder had the scouting report. Comes up top. Now Jurassic Park is open. Here's Schroeder. Jaeger, the Harvard transfer, up ahead to Schellenberger. Virginia unsettled. Cormier almost had number six. <laughs> uh, Virginia's getting some looks right now. Tell you, this last four and a half minutes, it, it's a little bit of a danger zone for St. Joe's. You'd love to carry some momentum into the locker room now. So you goal's got to be just to win this segment of the game. Millen, acceleration. Bends around, shuts. Schellenberger, shot deflected. Good recovery by St. Joe's. Cormier gets it back. Watch Schellenberger. Can't pitchfork it out of the air. Able to corral it. Still plenty of time to shoot. Schellenberger steps in. What bouncer turned away by Gross. Shot clock reset. 4-11 to go, quarter number two, and the possession lengthens for Virginia. Shelly using the earth, natural grass surface. It's like a fairway. It's absolutely beautiful. A little rain this week, so it's a little moist. And that ball just ricocheted off the turf. 29-12 shot advantage for Virginia. Millen. Working on the short stick, Marchini comes back to Cormier. Chismar playing the sub game against St. Joe's. Chismar coming out of the box. 
feet up top, shuts. One more. Millen Gross again. Boy, Tommy Gross, it's like he's defending the Bastille. Nice handle on that ground ball. Now, St. Joe's has to figure out a way to even out the possession advantage. It's something that made them so good in the regular season. They used the ride. They used the defensive pressure. Virginia's had the ball for most of this second quarter. Virginia's offside. They have seven players on defense. Uh, he might as well leave them on now. You get the flag. It was interesting. Kastner came over on the ride. Schultz was about to run off, and they said, no, you're already offside. Go back on. So uh, six on seven possession until we get the whistle. Here is Griffin Mallory. At two goals in the A-10 semis against UMass. Mallory chased by Whalen. Schroeder comes out to meet Anderson. Kastner's done a nice job on Bomer. Charlotte native. One of the best leaders in program history. St. Joe's will go man up. It's a good look at Levi Anderson. Grad student from Calgary. That was a white four three. Only a 30-second foul now, so St. Joe's got to get into their good set right away. There's no time to spin this ball endlessly around the outside. St. Joe's 31% entering play with the extra man. Final two minutes, first half, 11-6 Virginia. Jason probing the perimeter. That hit somebody. It comes to Virginia. Right, now the Cavaliers will counterpunch. Said it earlier. Ben Weyer is everywhere. Everywhere. His stat line in this first half alone, I mean, it could be like three cost turnovers and five ground balls. 44 in white is one of the dominant players. You're close. Four ground balls, two cost turnovers. And we get a timeout by Virginia, 135 to go. I mean, way five stellar saves, and they're going deep now. Uh, the Fighting Irish are playing. Like, Tyler Buckner's getting runs now, the quarterback from Alabama. Yeah, he's the fourth short stick D midi. Schellenberger to Cormier, almost six goals in the opening half. And the race to the sideline is won by Gone, so it's St. Joe's ball. And then you got Syracuse. Back in its customary Sunday night spot. It's been a few years since we've seen the Orange play a Sunday night home game. Uh, there'll be a lot of eyeballs on that game. Drew Carter and Ryan Boyle with the call from the Dome. Syracuse looking for a playoff win. I think that's a theme in this tournament as well, Anish. Everyone, you know, Johns Hopkins, are they back? Syracuse, are they back? They're back if they win two games. It's that simple. They're finding their way back until they're back. They've had great seasons. It's been a resurgence. But the true stamp comes when those two are fixtures for championship weekend. 40 seconds to go. First half. Bomer gives it up with Kastner all over him. They'll go at the short stick. Jaeger instead. And St. Joe's will call time. 34.2 seconds to go. You see some occasional Tiffany, as you just saw a look at him on the side, was to get this team's confidence back this week in practice. How do you get a good team to still think that they're great. Now, talking to a number of coaches from around the country this week, they all still view Virginia as one of the top three teams nationally. Cavaliers, the sixth seed. St. Joe's, champions in the A-10, looking to get one before halftime. Instead of turnover, five seconds to go. Jaeger bombs it downfield. And time expires in half number one. A dominant second quarter from Peyton Cormier and Connor Schellenberger. 
they put on a dodging, passing, and shooting clinic for the near 4,000 fans here at Clockner. And what would start it off as, as a clown show in terms of Virginia clearing became a, a, a display of, of precision offense. Cormier scored five times in the first 30 minutes. Schellenberger with a goal and three assists. The two constants and one of the best one-two punches in college lacrosse have the Cavaliers up by five with a half to play. The NCAA tournament underway here in Charlottesville. Their attack open. So right now you got to credit that Virginia close defense. Schroeder, Kastner, and company winning the battle. It's a movie we have seen quite a bit in the postseason. Names change. Sawstad's gone. Kologi's gone. Jurassic Park open in May. It's a franchise that's been rebooted a couple of times. We had a equipment issue for St. Joe's goalie Tommy Gross. He's hanging tough. I he tell you. is. I mean, he's defending the Alamo back there. Gavin Ty and Gobriel, and the Navy transfer comes away with the faceoff. Virginia will play it back. St. Joe's goes into its ride. And Weyer had it across, had it trail checked away. This is what made St. Joe's so good in the opening quarter, but Virginia recovers, and Peyton Cormier ties the school record for most goals in a season. That is number 61, match Xander Dixon's mark from a year ago, his sixth goal of the day. He's got 220 for his career, now one away from the NCAA record held by Mac O'Keefe. This play is a great example of the sport. Weyer carries in with confidence. All of a sudden, the ball's dislodged. He goes for it. Watch him make this move now. The first time grounder from St. Joe's misses it. He's able to get his stick on it and flip it to Cormier. He should get credit for an assist here. This is just an incredible play of tenacity and stick to itiveness, and then having the dexterity to flip it to Cormier. Cormier can't miss today. Climbing the charts. Up to 220. And with his six goals today, he ties a single game Virginia NCAA tournament record. It's shared by Doug Knight, Mikey Herring, Connor Schellenberger did it twice, and Cormier did it against Richmond last year as well. What's the NCAA all-time record? You said 10? Nine. 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 Oliver Marty, Gary, Gary Gay, there's a few others. Navy, I believe. Shot on the empty net. It's picked off. Boyden tries to ride it back for Virginia. And we're gonna get a loose ball push on St. Joe's. Virginia ball. That's the right look for Virginia against the 10 man. Just underthrew it by a bit. Millen running out of the box. And he's always gonna say the, the tough thing about clearing against the 10 man, it's like having six different quarterbacks. Like when you when you prepare a quarterback to throw against certain coverages, that's one guy. But in lacrosse, you've got to have all, all your close defense and some midfielders understand that same coverage because they're all at one point on the clear going to be quarterbacks themselves. It's pitchy, pitchy, woo-woo. Schellenberg, the skip to Boyden. Ryan Colsey recovers, the redshirt freshman. Shuts had two goals in the first half. The bowling ball shouldered midi. Shots anvils down the alley, back to Schellenberger. Four points in the first half. Three helpers looking for Colsey. Pass off the mark. Millen able to recover. Runs out of an angle. Skip pass. Cormier, face dot, shot, score. That's seven. He's now Virginia's single-season goals leader with 62, and he ties Mac O'Keefe's all-time record with 221 career goals. The lefty from Ontario. The dexterity to catch anything. And multiple finishes. He likes the twisters. 
He's got great head and shoulder fakes. You see the face dodge on the perimeter. Re-triggers here, sets up his feet, and finds Ned. A record-setting afternoon for Peyton Cormier, seven goals. And in this game today, he has broken Virginia's single-season goals record set by Xander Dixon last year. He's tied the NCAA career record for goals, and he set Virginia's single-game NCAA tournament record for goals. And he's three goals away now from setting the NCAA tournament record for goals, period, which is nine. Shared by Gary Gate, Oliver Marty, Chris Cloutier, and Mac O'Keefe. Oliver Marty, Canadian. Gary Gate, Canadian. Peyton Cormier, Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. Mac, Mac O'Keefe kind of played like one. From Syosset. Did spend some time as a high schooler up in Canada playing summer box. Virginia looking like their old self, Anish. I think that's a storyline, maybe a headline. Scary for their opponent. St. Joe's turns it over. Uh, they just cannot afford empty possessions right now. Virginia, when they get the ball in settled sets, they've been picking apart this defense. The deep corners, the attackmen in the deep corners are open. That's the look. Cormier. Steve Reich. Is that Kastner with that pass? Now he's going to go play basketball at Stanford in the fall. 60-yard rainbow. Which is now in the ACC. Call from Palo Alto. It's where he grew up. And that's seven goals. And in this game today, he has broken Virginia's single-season goals record set by Xander Dixon last year. He's tied the NCAA career record for goals, and he set Virginia's single-game NCAA tournament record for goals. And he's three goals away now from setting the NCAA tournament record for goals, period, which is nine, shared by Gary Gate, Oliver Marty, Chris Cloutier, and Mac O'Keefe. Oliver Marty, Canadian. Gary Gate, Canadian. Peyton Cormier, Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. Mac, Mac O'Keefe kind of played like one. From Syosset. Did spend some time as a high schooler up in Canada playing summer box. Virginia looking like their old self, Anish. I think that's a storyline, maybe a headline. Scary for their opponent. St. Joe's turns it over. Uh, they just cannot afford empty possessions right now. Virginia, when they get the ball in settled sets, they've been picking apart this defense. The deep corners, the attackmen in the deep corners are open. That's the look. Cormier. Steve Reich. Is that Kastner with that pass? Now he's going to go play basketball at Stanford in the fall. 60-yard rainbow. Which is now in the ACC. Call from Palo Alto. It's where he grew up. And that's six foot seven. He can play a year of college basketball and see how that goes. Maybe he'll end up like Pat Spencer playing in the NBA or, or end up in the PLL. A draft pick of the California Redwoods. Yep. PLL season starts next month. Schellenberger, Cormier for the record wide. One goal away, and Peyton Cormier will have scored the most in Division I men's lacrosse history. Virginia has not really scored much in transition today. They've been battering the St. Joe defense with their sub game, trying to play tricks on them. Now Colsey comes out of the box. Looks like a zone zone defense for the Hawks. Boyd and skip pass results in a turnover. The challenge for Lars Tiffany this week was to refine their confidence, refine their swagger and their mojo that this program is known for. Losers a four straight. And Quint, this was a game seen by many with upset potential. Kastner stick breaks. He's got to run off. Bad advantage right now for the time being. Water scores. St. Joe's takes advantage of the Saturday yard sale in Charlottesville. There's a lot of them. I was out in the Belmont area last night, and you could see people setting up for those Saturday yard sales in Charlottesville. 
This shot by Waters is gorgeous. Lefty rip over the top. You see the straight overhand release to the offside hip placement. That's a turn and rake. Nobody making that stop. Mark Waters, a sophomore, good looking player, 6'3", lefty from Ontario. Thirteen to seven. This was a six-four game after one quarter. And at that point, it looked like St. Joe's could go ooh, the distance ooh, with Virginia. Ooh, we got the Cavaliers have cleaned we, it we up. Got, Tommy the, the, McNeil getting into it, and now a man down at midfield. That looks like Gavin Ty. Yeah, this, the this, Virginia this is not the pretty. St. Joe's faceoff man. This is not pretty. Chismar comes up, Gimpy. He's been fighting injuries all week. Noah Chismar, 34 and white, is and he can hardly practice during the week. Injuries are a huge storyline in East. We saw it last week in the Ivy League tournament. Yale's a team. They just got banged up. They ran out of healthy bodies. Virginia's been dealing with injuries all season long. Who can stay healthiest the longest? It's a story coming into day one of this tournament as well. Ty able to get up. That's a good sign because it, this collision, you had bodies going in opposite directions that didn't really see each other. Ty has taken most of the faceoffs for St. Joe's this season. Connor Trent and Giuseppe Morici are the two backups. You're not allowed to make contact with the faceoff men while they're engaged in the clamp. And Chismar just comes in. That's hip to hip. That's clean. That's going to happen in this sport. This game combines elements of hockey and football. Here comes Bomer. Levi Anderson looking to get on the board. Gets free, and the twister gets him home. The book of Levi with its first words of this first round game. 33rd of the season. He's St. Joe's all-time points leader. Seven goals, two assists to the a championship. I like this. This is a wrinkle that we did not see in the first half. Mike Restivo and Scott Meehan, assistant coaches, draw this one up, and they get the ball to Levi up in that top area, and he's able to run downhill. The set effectively pulls Virginia's double team away from that entire left side. And Anderson, who's got strong left-handed tendencies, no doubt, he's able to use his body to protect his stick. And then the twister at the end improves his angle and adds a, a layer of deception to trying to save that ball. Gavin Tai, who took the spill, back out there, Chismar. Back out on the wings for Virginia. Ty wins the faceoff clean. St. Joe's plays it back. Gross corrals. All you're thinking right now, what you're always thinking is uh, you got to get it across. Is next goal. Hail Mary downfield. That's incomplete, Virginia ball. Time was running out, you had to get it over midfield before that shot clock hit 60. And here comes the 10 man now. Ware made the catch, buddy pass. He paid the price. We're That's gonna not going to go over well on the St. Joe's bench. Wow. Peyton Cormier has scored five of the last seven Virginia goals. Mankey Terenzi getting run on the midfield. Millen running out of the box. But Boyd and down at attack. Millen gets free, goes low. Little Baja snapper by the freshman, McCabe Millen. So if Millen's going to run on this midfield, Cavs fan have packed, they have packed this house at Clockner all season long. Finals just wrapping up. There's no band here today, but who would who'd want to miss this on a beautiful day? If Millen's going to run out of the midfield, Anish, the question is, does he deserve to be covered by the long pole? And I think that answer is yes. I think he can short Terenzi. I think he can short guys like McIntosh, Corey, Interlead whoever he runs with. And I think that's an adjustment that's got to be made going forward. 
if you play Virginia. Uh, we know he has the speed, but he offers some range, which has been lacking at times from the midfield. Well, there's a lot there. Then, then, then you can drag him behind in an invert if he does have the shorty on him and create all sorts of great matchups. Trail check by Whalen. He had a wayer as the LSMs today have had strong, impactful games. I, I think that's the style when you're playing St. Joe's. That's the style of game that's going to be conducive to those guys in the middle of the field making those type of plays. Virginia floats wow. it down, and that's how you that's, beat the ride. That's how you do it right there. What a pass. Is that Fulton? Number 16, George Fulton. Dialed it up from long distance. I love that. How easy is that? Where was that in the first quarter? I wonder how much video Virginia was able to look at during that, the extended halftime today. McCabe Millen lost it. Good defense by St. Joe's. There comes Schutz. Schellenberger sizes up the D from behind the cage. They cut hard inside, and they usually work in pairs. One guy will cut to the left post, one guy to the right. A lot of bodies caught in a Nimbus cloud in front of the goal. Schellenberger looking to navigate through the chaos. He finds Colsey, less than 10 to shoot. Flag down. That's a bailout. Schellenberger peeks at the shot clock and hits the post. Schellenberger lost his stick. Defender makes contact and will get the penalty. Junior from New Jersey, and Virginia two for two with the extra man today. Chopping lumber, got some high. And that again was with the shot clock in single digits. Schellenberger over to the wing. Cormier has the all-time goals record in Division I men's lacrosse. They grab the ball, these fans on their feet. And what a special, special moment. The big lefty from Ontario, this place is going crazy. Iso shot, look at his feet. He shot ready when he receives that. It's a great tip for young players. You see how, how he was not square to the ball? but he was kind of sideways. That way he could catch that in one motion. He's already plant ready. Weight shift from the back foot to the front foot. So much of his power and torque comes from his hands. Eight goals today, giving him 222 for his career. One more than another great lefty, Mac O'Keefe, who started Penn State. Completely different players who got the same result. O'Keefe, a much longer release, usually from greater distances. Cormier, a, a master of the inside shot. That snappy left-handed finish. Cormier today, 8 of 15 shooting. St. Joe's as a team, 8 of 15 shooting. Colucci had the right idea. Schellenberger says it was tipped. The officials agree. Virginia keeps the ball, and right now St. Joe's, this is what happened to Virginia last time against Notre Dame. Cavaliers didn't have the ball. St. Joe's, since that first quarter, has not had the ball. Now, Cormier may not be done breaking records. He needs two more goals, and he would set the single-game NCAA tournament record for most goals. Okay, I guarantee if we ask him, or if he's asked about his draft snub, but I got to think that was a short-term motivation. And that doesn't speak to his, the career of work and the body of work, but I think it does point to maybe his motivation today in this game. That 
that's on Virginia. St. Joe's ball. Snubbed on Tuesday night in the Premier yeah, Lacrosse right. League draft. Anything surprise you in that first round? Well, he was signed by the PLL Atlas yep. as a free agent, where he will join a bunch of former teammates. And he'll join Connor Schellenberger. So it, it, Xander Dixon, Schellenberger, Chris Gray, I believe. Look, like chemistry is something in this game that's hard to quantify, but chemistry is real. When you can have an attack unit where one plus one plus one equals four, where two guys have a relationship on the field, where one plus one equals three, like that's what you're looking for. And that's it. Over. And again, St. Joe's not getting shots on their possession. Weyer's got seven goals on the season. Schellenberger sizes it up, and Cormier's got the backup. On a shot, possession belongs to the team closest it, to the ball when and where it goes out. And three guys, Peyton Cormier, Connor Schellenberger, Ben Weyer. 44 and white. Just an incredible performance today. Off the ground, in the air, carrying out, playing man-to-man -man defense. I haven't seen a better LSM performance this season. Millen to Boyden. Gross got a stick on it. Rebound loose. Picked up by St. Joe's. Boy, scrappy play by Boyden. The Tufts transfer works that one back, and with it, they get the 82nd reset. That's twice now. Boyden has been aggressive on the ride and created a turnover. Now they're working on Gavin Ty, meanwhile, on the St. Joe's sideline. He is walking gingerly behind the lineup of players. Shuts out to the wing. Seven goal lead for Virginia. Shuts splits the D, lost the ball, shoveled ahead. Now St. Joe's in transition. Levi Virch pulls up too high. Birch on the season has a couple of goals, nine for his career. He's the A-10 Defensive Player of the Year and one of the best polls in all of Division I. Paul carcatera has got him on the big board for next year as a top 10 PLL pick, maybe as high as number three. But I, I did love George Fulton, 16 in white, does a nice job on that closeout. He makes his kind of, Birch kind of tips his hand that he's going to shoot, and Fulton closes ground enough to impact the shot. Nice move behind the back, no! How do you challenge that if you're St. Joe's? That looked close. Kastner the other way. Virginia's got a trailer. Colsey to Schellenberger, breaks. Clock and score awareness, I tell you. One thing about Connor Schellenberger, he is going to manage the situation to put his team in the best position to win ball games, one in white. Watch this behind the back shot, will hit iron. Jesse Jason over the shoulder, he's got the goalie beat. Watch bouncer off the iron behind Noons and then kicks out into play. That was close. The winner of this game moves on to United Stadium in Towson next week to take on the winner of Lehigh and Hopkins. Mountain Hawks and Blue Jays play the early game tomorrow. Quint and I will be in Baltimore. Russ Dillon will be joining us as our stat man. He's Russ here is going to put some mileage on, though. He's, he's going to hustle down to College Park. To be the statistician for Cotter and Kark for uh, the late game. Double duty. Russ is a, a man whose uh, talents are sought after. Let's put it that way. He's one on one. Best stat man in lacrosse. Bomer, top side. Nunes denies it. Flag down. Bomer dumped after the shot and that drew the flag. Nunes has looked good today. Coming in off this, off a little. One minute. A patch of games where he hasn't played to his standard. 
asking Lars Tiffany about it. He said, no, there's, it's not a... It's, it's not a short leash. And Kip Turner, the goalie coach at Virginia, doing fine work, getting Nunes back to where he should be. And Kip, I trust, former Cavalier goalie, led the team to a national championship. There's Russ. There he is, out. Russ. Look up. Russ, wave to your, your fans at home. There you go. <laughs> How many hot dogs have you eaten today? Stop. Russ is busy at work, man. Where do you think we get the notes? They got some private party here in the, in the uh, press box area with Chick-fil-A's. Russ could easily dust three of those in a halftime. Oh, they didn't have them today, did they? Man up chance. That one missed the cage. Not that he's large or anything. He's just a good eater. Second and nine. Tommy McNeil kicks it forward. Gets a hip check from Virch. Bergman shovels it. Now Fulton. Out of bounds. Schellenberger Ooh. gets free upstairs. rocking what's the dna of the virginia program what's it's always been for the last decades ground ball play ground balls win games ground balls create transition on <laughs> schellenberger the split what a nasty move right to left Woo. the second overall pick in the pll draft a three-time all-american first teamer He'll probably be a four-time first-team All-American, a three-time to Wartown finalist, and maybe the best offensive player in the history of this storied program. And last game on this pitch. Yeah. Win or lose, last game on Klockner. And you summon that when the Cavs coming in off that four-game losing streak. Coach Tiffany appealing to his seniors. So last time you'll play on this field. We will see that again tomorrow, Anish, at Johns Hopkins, where a giant senior class, guys like Garrett Degnan, Jacob Angelus, playing their last game on Homewood Field. That, that, that carries weight. Same thing uh, later today. Brennan O'Neill, last game on Koskinen. Duke, Utah follows us. The Blue Devils, the two seed. Anderson missed the cage. We've got Denver, Michigan. Matt Brown, first year, taking over for Bill Tierney. Denver was in the top 10 for most of the season. They're the five seed. They'll be home for Michigan which won the Big Ten tournament two years in a row. Michigan needed the AQ to get in, and they saved their best for the end game. And then Maryland, which is really struggling of late on offense, will take on Ivy League champion Princeton in the game tonight in College Park. Flag down against Virginia. Bomer plays it up top. Anderson from the high wing. Kastner greets him. Now the double team dislodged. And the whistle. Chismar, now a junior. Could be a future captain here in Charlottesville. Wouldn't surprise me in the least bit. He's been a fixture on that D midfield now for three years. What can St. Joe's do? Man up, had a good look. Bomer whiffed. That's the guy they Watch want. by Eccleston, boy, 6'4 Canadian. That's a good unit. Carter Page inside. Eccleston's played well against some of the big-time opponents. Had five goals in his debut against BU, two against Duke, three against Penn. Turned away. Jaeger, the Harvard transfer with honors. 
Turbo's into the box. Quarter number three in the books. Haymakers early for both teams. Since the second quarter, Jurassic Park. Effectively dodge, maneuver around defensive threats when they run at him. The way he uses his body, his hands, the fakes, his shooting percentage for his career, and he is hovering around like 45%. Do you remember the more cowbell Saturday Night Live skit with Christopher Walken? Bruce Dickinson, every time I put my pants on in the morning, I make gold records. It's been that kind of day for Peyton Cormier. Every time he suits up, especially today, he suits up. He's breaking one record after another, and he's got one more in sight, which is the NCAA Division I single-game record for most goals in an NCAA tournament game. That's The record is nine. Cormier's sitting at eight with a quarter to play. As his parents, Karen and, and his dad, Chris, who's a, uh, a coach up in Canada, share in this great day, this last game for him on this, this uh, renowned pitch, Clockner Stadium. Shuts, gets free of Keener, throws it over the head of Millen. Turnover, Virginia. Cavs Story today. Shot advantage, Virginia plus 21, plus four on ground balls. And after a sloppy first quarter, Virginia cleaned up its clearing game. Look, th this is a St. Joe's ride that every single coach in the country is going to be looking at film during the offseason. Can we utilize it ourselves? How is it different? What, what are the proprietary angles that it creates? Eccleston stared down by Nunes. Now here's the 10-man ride again. It's like playing Minesweeper. That. That's a, again, that's the right idea by Nunes. He just airmails it, gets too much under it. Millen is open. Nunes, extremely talented, coming from the Woodlands in Texas. Played midfield throughout high school, really committing to the goalie position later in his career. So he, he's, he's an accomplished field player. And he had his struggles down the stretch. He was pulled against Duke after one quarter when he was 0 for 7, struggled in the first half against Syracuse the following week. We get a flag down. Pulled again in the ACC semifinal against Notre Dame. Yeah, he, he was battling a, a little bit of an injury when he was pulled against Duke. I, I, I give Matt and, and Coach Kip Turner a lot of credit. You got to go back to work. You know, look, Anish, we, we all give up bad goals somewhere along the line. And you got to go back to work. You got to be committed to your process, whatever that is. And, and seeing a lot of volume on a Monday and Tuesday following those efforts is usually your best medicine. When Virginia won its title in 2019, they had no idea what version of Alex Road would show up in May. He had been up and down all season. He ends up being the MOP championship weekend for Lars Tiffany's first title in Charlottesville. Alex's success. St. Joe's able to get one back. It's 16 to nine. That's Eccleston. The fans from Hawk Hill made the trip down to Charlottesville. They were here early. They were tailgating when I pulled in here at, at 9.30 this morning. A lot of excitement, Coach Taylor Ray and this program dominating the Atlantic 10, rolling into Charlottesville on a 12-game win streak. Eccleston, more proof that guys from D2 and D3 can transfer up the ladder and be great players. You've seen it with Jack Boyden. You see it with... Eccleston, a, a national champion for Lenore Ryan. D2 champs a season ago. There's Virch. Ty battling at the faceoff X for St. Joe's. You know, visibly in pain, favoring his leg as he came off the field. Unsettled opportunity, Virginia collapsing quickly on defense. And they force Bronander to give it up. He'll run off. He's a short stick D midi. So th this game emblematic of a, a, a first round theme you're going to see today and, and tomorrow is 
the at-large team comes in off a loss, one or more games, the automatic qualifier comes in on a hot streak. Lehigh, winners of six straight. Towson, hot streak. Michigan, hot streak. Towson, nine straight wins. St. Joe's made the trip from Hawk Hill having won. Princeton later today a on a hot streak. How about the long pole dodging a double? Whalen gives it up. Virch, the takeaway artist. Virginia riding. Should have been a flag. Gross got slashed on the first one. I could hear it up from here. Eccleston brings it across. <laughs> Seven goal deficit. St. Joe's trying to melt this lead a little bit. The way they play with their ride. Are they capable of coming back? Yes, but it's a tall order the way this game has gone since the second quarter. Well, Virginia seems to have figured out how to better dissect the pressure. Utah and Duke follow our game. Kevin Fitzgerald, Mark Dixon have the call from Durham. Michigan, Denver to follow. Maryland, Princeton to cap Saturday. Wills Burt backpedaling, hits the ground, no flag. St. Joe's able to ride it back. Tenen White's an important piece of this defense going forward. Look, as the temperature heats up, Virginia's not only going to be able to just rely on Jaeger and Chismar. Page. The hat trick for Carter Page. Tell you, this is one you want back if you're Matt Noons. Because low to low can't go. It just can't happen. When a shooter drops his stick down to the earth like this and skims this ball, it's just telegraph city. It's a low release to a low shot. Here it is, low release, low shot. Noons is there. I don't know if that skipped underneath or to the left of his stick. He was on it as he glares at the scoreboard. Faceoffs almost even, Virginia 14, St. Joe's 13. Gobriel and Ty. Gobriel wins the faceoff, takes a hit. Chismar on the counter. Weyer back to Chismar. LSM to D Mitty for the tally. Noah Chismar was under-recruited as a high school attackman at St. Paul's School in North Baltimore. He applied to Virginia on his own as a student, got in, and basically is a walk-on on this lacrosse team as an attackman. Well, guess what? His role is anything but an attackman now. He's become this team's heart and soul, really a heartbeat of this team in terms of his energy plays, his toughness. And this Virginia rope unit continue to uh, find goals and assists. It's a, it's a high-scoring trio. When you look at their championship teams in 19 and 21, the way they owned the middle of the field with the likes of Jared Connors, and the two-way middies, the Jeff Connors, the Ryan Conrads. Ben Weyer's been good, but Chismar's been banged up a lot of the season. So has Terenzi. They haven't been as good in that department this season. And you think about, like, a uh, Maryland team in 2022, the amount they scored 25 goals from, from their rope unit alone. Uh, their ability to, to run from defense to offense or to score off of, off of uh, face-offs. And if Virginia's not going to get lead production from their second midfield, then guys like Weyer, Chismar, Terenzi, and others have to get in on the scoring. Yeah, that Maryland team a couple of years ago, didn't they have four D middies end up in the PLL? Led by Bubba Fairman. Schellenberg, a six-point game. He averages six a game in the tournament for his career. One of the most storied in Cavaliers history. Zone from the Hawks. McIntosh behind the back, body save Gross. It's a nice ground ball and carry out. It's a kill of the possession. 
So important. Patrick Clemens, first team all conference, graduate student from Springfield, Pennsylvania. Ten saves now for Tommy Gross. He has seen a lot of artillery. Winner of this game will face the winner of Lehigh Johns Hopkins next Sunday in Towson. Backhanded shot not there. It'll stay with St. Joe's. The hustle. Got a helmet off. He's got to leave the and field. That means he's going to have to leave the field. Still be St. Joe's ball. Carter Page has to come off. Kastner 39 in white, tying up Bomer on the goal line extended. Virginia's uh, won that battle between this uh, highly acclaimed St. Joe's you attack. Come in to the second whistle. So the first whistle at the reason. Colin Campbell comes in for Page. Post up on the crease. Bomer got the hand free. Well, that was Campbell, excuse me. Second goal of the season for the sophomore. It's a gutsy move by Colin Campbell. Sanford School in Rising Sun, Maryland. Rising Sun, a town of about 3,000 people in the northeast corner of the state of Maryland. He commute to play for Team 91, Maryland. Watch him run through this stick check. Watch the courage it takes right here in the corner, right there. I mean, you got to be tough, man. This, this game... This game will challenge you. You know you're going to pay the price to turn the corner, to take a two-handed check on the hands, the wrists, or the forearms, and to get the pay dirt. That, that's courage from Colin Campbell. Six-goal lead for Virginia. Eight minutes to go. Seven different goal scorers for St. Joe's. Still time to make this interesting, Quint. How do you know about Rising Sun, Anish? I was curious. I saw he was from Rising Sun. I had... No idea where Rising Sun was. I've heard of most of the Maryland cities covering the sport. There we go. I looked it up. I, I, it was funny. <laughs> I was talking to Dave Ryan, our, our, our cohort, former ESPN announcer, now with CBS, just about our, our knowledge of the United States. And it's, it's towns and regions and rivers and mountains and colleges. But it's oftentimes like, that's the benefit of doing what we do for a living. We, we know a lot of little small towns around the country. And oftentimes it's the pronunciations that get you. You go to Georgia, it's not Cairo, it's Cairo. You're up in central New York. It's not Pompeii, it's Pompey. And one thing about this area, Charlottesville is booming. It has been for the past 20 years. And every time I drive down 29 now to, from Baltimore to get here, it takes longer and longer with yeah. the traffic. It really is a... Uh, so how long, how long am I going to be in the car with you after the game? Why don't you go back with Russ if you want to complain? <laughs> I didn't know that was an option. Somebody's, oh, God, he's without somebody's glove. glove came out. That's playing without equipment. Change of possession, Virginia ball. Give a lot of credit to St. Joe's. Taylor Ray has built a roster with a lot of players who are from what you would call offshoots, areas that are far from hotbeds. You look at their top six, right? Three Canadians. North and South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. Yep. Yeah. Bomer, Charlotte Catholic, and the lives in the Ballantyne area in uh, South Charlotte. Places like Liberty High School in Sykesville, Maryland. As you said, Sanford School in Rising Sun, Maryland. Michael Gogan from Illinois. We're gonna see that again tomorrow with the Lehigh roster. Yeah, they've got a, a Maryland flavor, but it's unique as Schutz turns the corner. Schutz gets it back. Good defense. Turnover. Christian Marchini. Maybe a chance here on Settled for St. Joe's. Kastner says, I don't think so. Yeah, he's been all over Levi Anderson. Just daring Levi Anderson to go to his right hand. 
The one shot Anderson scored, he went down the alley with his right and then scored at the last second on a twister. Virginia much more fundamental in their man-to-man -man defense. They've done a nice job in their double teams and recoveries. Waters and other Canadians, 17 and Crimson. What you saw last week in Charlotte, it's a good stop by Nunes. What you saw in Charlotte what was really the low point of the Virginia defense this season. The Notre Dame dismantled them in the first quarter. Here's a shot on goal, and Gross ran up. I'm not sure he knew the shot was coming. It is a shot, so did Gross get a piece? They say he got a piece. Shot clock reset and Virginia ball. 47 shots for the Cavaliers, 29 for St. Joe's. If Virginia gets Lehigh, it would be the first meeting of the season between the two. They get Johns Hopkins in the quarters. Hopkins beat Virginia on this field. 16 to 14. St. Joe's Matt still Collin has four minutes left. Yeah, Matt Collison with some big games. I think the intrigue for the Lehigh game would be Kevin Cassis. Former head coach at Lehigh. First year offensive coordinator here in Charlottesville. Cassis built the Lehigh program and then handed it off to a very impressive uh, Will Scudder. Yeah. You got John Crawley on the Hopkins staff who was with Lehigh as the offensive coordinator. Terenzi. That's a reset. That is a shot clock reset and a backbreaker. 11 saves for Gross. He has been giving up a lot of rebounds, though, today. I like Tommy Gross a lot. I, I think just from an athletic profile, he, he offers you a lot. He's at 52% this season. He's getting better and better. I've seen so many of these young goalies now go to that wide base. Now, Virginia may finish with 50 shots today. St. Joe's came in giving up only about 32 a game. And a new goalie for Virginia, Kyle Morris comes in for Matthew Noon, for Matthew Noons. St. Joe's pressing out. Down six, three minutes to go. Cage is empty. Terenzi looking for a Northwest passage. It's not there. Timeout, Lars Tiffany. Timeout, Virginia. 2.56 left, Virginia on the verge of a quarterfinal berth behind a record-breaking performance was bounced in the Big East tournament. And then the late game today, a lot of folks feel it's Princeton, Maryland, four and five in its last nine. Their best player, their leading scorer, Braden Irksa. He's a game-time decision. He's questionable after getting hurt in the Big Ten tourney. Yeah, all those games on ESPNU, if you're, if you're out and about, ESPN Plus, you can watch these games on your phone as well. We covered that similar Maryland game last year in Nice. It was one of the great games of the NCAA tournament where Army came to College Park and pulled off that, that emotional upset. Can it happen two years in a row? And John Tillman, since he's been at Maryland, has not had back-to-back first-round exits. It's been a challenging year for the Terps. I think if you're watching that game tonight, the three players who have to be stars for Maryland are... Luke Weirman, their face-off man. And that's going to be a tough battle with Justin Wheatfeld. Yeah. Logan McNaney, their goaltender. Owner of a national championship ring, but his save percentage now is down around 50%. And then Ajax Zapatello, who was drafted early in the PLL draft. He has got to, to win his matchup with either Nate Kabiri or Coulter Mackesy. Matt Madelon and what he's done at Princeton this year, given the fact that you could put together Maybe an all-star team of Princeton transfers just from the playoff seven teams this starters, year. Seven starters. Seven starters on other teams in the, around the country. It speaks to the culture that he's built. It speaks to the buy-in from the players who are still there. And make no mistake, those players left because they didn't have a choice. You only get four years to play in the Ivy. There's no COVID year. There's no redshirt year. So all those players who transferred out, had an extra year of eligibility, but they couldn't use it at Princeton or any other Ivy League institution. Talking leagues, this game is about Virginia and the ACC. The Ivy only has one team in the NCAA tournament, but that conference has a bright future. I, I believe that 2025 could be the year of the Ivy. 
And we'll see what happens in this tournament. Will the ACC dominate? Big Ten's got four teams who can certainly win a first round game. Or, or will it be a, a small school? Someone unheralded who is a party crasher. Historically, since the tournament expanded in 2003, 17 of the last 20 national champions have come from current members, current members of either the ACC or the Big Ten. 13 from the ACC, four from the Big Ten. The three outliers, Loyola 2012, Denver 2015, and Yale in 2018. Virginia's four-game losing streak will come to an end. St. Joe's 12-game win streak will come to an end. The return of Jurassic Park, the long poles for Virginia, gave this vaunted St. Joe's attack all they could handle. Ben Weyer, Mitchell Whalen, Cole Kastner, Fulton, Schroeder, they did the work on the defensive end. Schellenberger, his usual brilliant self, and Peyton Cormier with an afternoon to remember. Cormier in Virginia's first round win. Broke UVA's single season goals record. He broke the NCAA's all time goals record. And he set the Virginia single game record with eight goals. Quite a senior send off. Virginia fixed their defense. Offense came alive in that game after some sloppy clearing early. So good signs for Wahoo fans here in Charlottesville as they advance. And, and congratulations to Taylor Ray and the Hawk team. Another A-10 championship, a 12-win season with a young, talented team going forward. We were talking all week how much fun it was to watch St. Joe's on film, the way they play, the way they ride, the physicality. For the first 15 minutes, they gave Virginia all they could handle. The Cavaliers cleaned up the clearing game and were able to pick apart St. Joe's in settled sets. UVA onto the quarterfinals. Next Sunday, Virginia will play either Johns Hopkins or Lehigh at United Stadium on the campus of Towson University. Post-game reaction after this.